climate change warning. Oceans could rise over two meters, that's seven feet, very soon, putting 200 million people at risk. Very soon, this uh, scientist claims in about 80 years. This is uh, by Tom Fish on Express UK. Still, that's pretty fast. That, that's almost one foot every 10 years. Sea levels could surge seven feet in the landmark study worst case scenario into the effects of man-made climate change. The Earth's oceans could swell to nearly seven feet by the year 2100. This would displace hundreds of millions of people, according to this research. The rising water levels would destroy more than a million square miles of farmland, triggering profound consequences for humanity. This makes the latest study into the effects of man-made climate change twice as much as previous doomsday predictions into a potential global warming apocalypse, quote-unquote. Professor Jonathan Bamber, Bristol University School of Geographical Sciences, and the reporter's lead author explained the effects of multi melting ice sheets from Greenland as well as the Antarctic. He said, if we continue increasing greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere, that will result in an increase of about 5C by 2100, he says. So a sea level rise of this magnitude would clearly have profound consequences for humanity. He says, for that level of warming, which is very serious in itself, we find there is a 5% probability the sea level will rise to be 2 meters by 2100. And that is our worst case scenario if we carry on and don't take any remedial action about greenhouse gases. Now, okay, we know that one reason why the Antarctica ice shelves are melting also has to do with the 100 volcanoes that are there. They're melting. There's also new volcanoes found. This is doing um, one of our reports about a month ago that they found a new volcano in Antarctica which is active, which is melting the sea ice from the bottom up. And uh, so that's another aspect of sea ice melting. We also have an increase of, me of methane in our atmosphere and the scientists don't know where it's coming from. And that's a bad sign as well because methane also in the right conditions of sunlight and heat turns into formaldehyde. So we would, we would be breathing formaldehyde, eating, breathing, sleeping formaldehyde in our atmosphere. That's, of course, poison. Um, uh, so it's not just uh, the man-made effects, it's also what's taking place as far as earth changes are concerned, geologically. And that's going to be an uptick now that we have our solar minimum, because we will have an increase in earthquakes and volcanic eruptions as well, which goes along with solar minimum. So, uh, he says, it is, this is our worst case scenario. If we carry on, don't take remedial action concerning greenhouse gases. And the worst affected areas will hit low-lying areas around the world. Professor Bamber said Bangladesh is already susceptible to deal level rise uh, in a two-meter sea level rise will displace millions of people in Bangladesh. It will also affect the Netherlands, which are also you know, already below sea level. They have dikes in order to keep the, keep the seawater out. It will affect the Netherlands, Denmark, parts of Florida, as well as the mega cities, including London, New York, Rio de Janeiro, and Shanghai. And let's remember that even Long Island itself is very low-lying. I've been to North Carolina, Hilton Head Island, you know, it was raining, and that the whole thing got flooded. We're, the, the, the streets were underwater. It was just terrible. Uh, already we have areas that are very low-lying, let alone having sea level rise. So, uh, he says, we do not have much time to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. The scientists explained, he said, we have really got a decade or so to take the radical action in order to reduce these emissions. He says, if we do that now, then we can avoid the very high sea levels we have been predicting. 
The shock finding, of course, is based on a technique called structured experiment judgment that pooled the knowledge of 22 climate change specialists. So this finding, this technique, builds on rationale rather than political consensus by accounting for both uncertainties and diversities of opinions or perspectives. In their first study of its kind, the international team found protection strategies should consider future sea level rise, that's SLR for short, will exceed 2 meters, that's 6.56 feet. The University of Bristol-led study provides the most accurate understanding up to now of their effect, with sea level rise posing a threat to, of course, all these coastal communities and ecosystems. This is what the researchers explain. As we know, most cities are very low-lying. They're on seacoasts, they're on the banks of rivers, which are very low-lying most times, especially, of course, uh, Europe, you know, the old continent, as well as the new cities in the new lands, of course. Now, this will help the implementing adaptable adaptation strategies that require quantitative projections of future sea level rise based on numerical facts. But much can be done to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. Professor Bamber said, if we don't advert, avert or take action against the worst consequences of climate change, the impacts on humanity will be very profound. We do have time and the technology, and we know what we need to do. It is just a question of government and politicians taking climate change seriously and acting on it instead of producing empty rhetoric. Now, I'm looking at sea level changes worldwide. According to NASA, climate change and global warming, sea level rise is caused primarily by two factors related to global warming and the added water from the melting ice sheets and glaciers and the expansion of seawater as it warms. So as it warms, it also expands. It takes up more volume. The first graph tracks the change in sea level since 1993 as observed by satellites. So this is astonishing. As you can see, We have the readings from 1880, that's at zero, okay? The sea level change is zero, 1880, and we can see the increase of uh, millimeters, in millimeters. 1900, it was about 40 millimeters, 1920, 50, 1940, every, just uh, about every 20 years. 1940 from zero, of 1880, went down up to about 60, and then in 1960 it was about 120, and uh, 1980 was about 140, I would say. In the year 2000 it was about 170, and up to now it's about 240. Sea level rise, 240 millimeters in uh, just over 100 years, 140 years. And from what I've converted, 240 millimeters is about 9.45 inches, let's say 10 inches. Okay, so it's about an inch a year, let's say. No, uh, uh, an inch every 10 years. So, and this was before basically the, uh, the full-fledged climate change that we have. Now we saw the 19... 60, for example, up to now is 100 millimeters, just as it was 1880 up to 1960. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on 
not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.